Hey, how are you doing? Scotty from scottsbasselessons.com. Hope you're well. And today we're going to go epic, okay? I'm going to discuss vocabulary. I'm going to, don't worry if you don't know what that is. I'm not talking about the this kind of vocabulary. I'm talking about this type of vocabulary. I'm going to teach you an absolutely face-melting lick. And, and then I'm going to show you how you can incorporate bits from licks. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I've heard that licks aren't good to learn. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's total crap. They are if you do it in the right way and use it in the right way, okay? People that are saying, don't play licks, okay? They're not taking into consideration. That is a huge part of learning vocabulary. So let's get ready to get into the lesson and learn this epic lick. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to show you the lick because it, it is very epic. And then I just want to talk about vocabulary a little bit before we start breaking this down. Okay, so the lick is based over a 2-5-1 in the key of C major. Okay, so that's just a D minor going to a G7 going to a C major. Okay, so D minor to G7 to C major 7. That's what the the lick is over those chords. Okay, it's a two five one in the key of C. If you don't know what a two five one is, okay, here's a crash course. Take notes if you don't know. Okay, so every note of the major scale, okay, of any major scale has a chord connected with it. Okay, so in the, the case of C major, it's C major, D minor, E minor, F major. G dominant 7, A minor, B half diminished, and C major. Don't worry, I don't want you to take notes on this right now, okay? So, just remember that every major scale, every note of the major scale has a chord connected to it, okay? And the sequence, this is where you can take notes, the sequence is this, major, minor, minor, major, dominant, minor, which is the sixth, minor, and then minor seven flat five, okay? That's the seven, the seven notes of a major scale and the chords connected to it. And that sequence, guys, always stays the same. It's always major, minor, minor, major, dominant, minor, minor seven flat five, okay? So if you take any major scale, in this case, let's take the C major scale, and play it up one string like that, and then connect the chords to it we, and say them major, minor, minor, major, dominant, minor, minor seven flat five, and then major. Okay, that sequence always stays the same. We give them numbers chord one, chord two, chord three, chord four, chord five, chord six, chord seven, and the octave again. And then when I say it's a two, five, one in the key of C. That means it's chord two from the key of C, which is major, minor. It's a minor chord, D minor. It's chord five from the key of C. Two, three, four, five, which is a dominant chord. So we've got a minor chord going to a dominant chord, G7, and then to the one chord which is C major. So that is what a two, five, one is in the key of C major, okay? Now, let's check out the lick. Here's what it goes like, okay? So over the minor, in fact, I'll just play the lick in its entirety, then we're gonna break it down. Okay, again. times. So over the D minor. And again. Okay, so that's the lick. Okay, now I say lick because it is a lick. You know, I've, I've learned it and I can repeat it time and time again. And it's a really, really important part of playing any instrument is to be able to repeat the same phrase. Okay? Now 
if you're watching this and you're thinking, whoa, that is way too hard for me, that is cool, but I really want you to watch the rest of this tutorial because the stuff that we're covering within it is really applicable to everybody. It's not just people that are using this lick or learning this lick, it's for everybody. You're gonna be able to take the concepts that I'm gonna talk about in this lesson and take it through into whatever you're working on right now, okay? So again, just one more time, that lick. Oh. Okay, so that's the lick. Now, why are licks important? You know, you've probably heard some people say, oh, don't learn licks, don't learn licks, okay? And it really is, um, it's a bad thing to get into your, you know, into your mind. You shouldn't be thinking about, you know, oh, it's bad to learn licks because it's a really important part of learning any instrument. Now, what I want you to think about, and I, I am gonna construct this deconstruct, shall I say, this entire lick down into pieces, okay, once we've discussed what vocabulary is and why it's important. We're gonna deconstruct this lick and then I'm gonna show you how to steal parts of that lick and use them in different grooves and that's where the vocabulary and why uh, we're learning licks like this come in. So I'm just gonna rewind and just I wanna talk a little bit about licks and what they're there for, okay? And, and what, how we're learning, you know, why we learn the instrument in the way that we do. So the first thing is that a lick is just a phrase. It's a phrase like when we were speaking. So I really like to think about learning the instrument, a bass or any instrument, it's just like learning to speak when we were kids. Um, first of all, we learn the sounds, you know, we learn how to make the sounds how to make the sounds clear, how to pronounce the sounds. And then we go on to, you know, using words and we learn words and then we learn sentences, okay, which is a phrase. And I'm just going through this with my little boy. Now I've got a little boy, he's two, just over two years old and he's, you know, learning to speak. And it's great being able to watch him do this because it's so applicable to what we're doing, learning the bass. It's so, it's exactly the same. First of all, he learns the words you know, toast, you like saying the word toast, um, and helicopter cop for helicopter, you know, he's nearly there, he's getting it, helicopter cop. Um, and first of all, he's learning the words, and then he's gonna, and he's just getting into this now, learning to link those words together. And that obviously is a phrase, it's a sentence, right? And that is exactly what a lick is on any instrument, okay? It's a, a join it, joining, okay, words to create a phrase, to create a sentence. So when I play, okay, that's just, I'm joining, that's, that's one word you could say, and then, could be another word. joining the words we're getting the sounds then we have the words and then we join the words to create full phrases now my point is when people say oh licks are bad licks are bad you shouldn't learn them well how can you learn to speak on your instrument without learning any phrases you know you're just going to pull it out of thin air you're just going to hope for the best and you know i don't know i can't even imagine not um learning licks and then using the licks and this is the important thing using the licks that we learn to in, to reinforce the vocabulary within our playing and soak up the licks into our vocabulary and then we can use certain parts of the licks and break them up and then it just becomes part of who we are you know on the instrument remember whatever you're transcribing now you should be transcribing you should be learning great bass lines you know you become a great bass by player by learning great bass lines you know you become a great speaker public speaker by studying people that have you know done great public speeches uh, same deal on bass so or any instrument so we study what people have done before us and then we get it into our playing, certain licks people have played, certain lines, we soak it into our own bass playing, and then it becomes part of our voc vocabulary. And essentially, if you think about it, you will be a, um, a product, you'll be a product in the end of the stuff that you listen to and transcribe. 
You know, the, the bass lines and things and licks and grooves and riffs that you steal, that will become you as a bass player in the end. You know, you'll be, become a product of that. And that is why, you know, transcribing is super important and, and you can control it. You can listen to great stuff. You know, you don't need to just listen to what's on the radio. You can think to yourself, well, I'm going to listen to, you know, so-and-so for the rest of the week. And then I'm going to listen to this great album that week. And you can really con control your influences, which will, in, in, you know, in part, control your, your output as a bass player and what you're going to sound like. So that is why vocabulary is so important, okay? Or, or learning licks, should I say? because it becomes part of your vocabulary. And as this lesson unfolds, you're going, to, you're going to learn a lot more about it. I'm going to show you how you can take a lick and then incorporate it in other things so it does become part of your vocabulary and how to really strengthen that. And that's why if you're just, you know, if you, if you listen to that lick and you were like, whoa, way too hard for me, the stuff that I'm going to be talking about is really relevant to you still because it's, it's a technique that you can use with any type of lick, okay? So let's check out the lick. So the lick, as I said earlier, is just, a, it's, a, it's a two, five, one lick, okay? In the key of C, which is, the first chord is a D minor, then G7, and then C major seven. So we're just playing over the D minor, the G7, and the C major seven. Um, up to speed, it sounds like this. Again. Okay, so as you can see, it's a, it's a really, really cool lick. Now when learning any lick, I really recommend breaking it down into sections, okay? Don't try and get the full thing down up to speed because then you will, it'll just sound crap, you know, you'll be stumbling and you'll be, you know. So what you want to do is you want to break it into little sections and then focus on getting those sections up to speed and then joining it all together. So that's what we're going to do right now. So the first bit, let's look at the the uh, the little bit of a D minor, okay? So it's a really great phrase, this is first phrase. I use that all the time. We're going to be talking about phrasing in a minute. Okay, so it's just, and I should say at this point, uh, if you're an Academy member, you will have the full tab and notation for this directly below the video. Just click it and it'll open in another window so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, if you're not an Academy member yet, guys, get over to the Academy. It's, you know, absolutely epic. We do live um, seminars every week. That guys like Anthony Wellington, Ed Friedland, Steve Lawson, Todd Johnson, uh, me, <laughs> and, a host, and um, a host of other guys. Steve Jenkins is just now on board. Cody Wright's going to be doing some. If you've seen Cody, frightening. Uh, we do these all every, every week, and we also have tons and tons of step-by-step -step courses as well. So I will put a link to the Academy underneath this video, and you can get a 14-day trial for free, um, and so no worries, check it out in the link below. So anyway, back to this lick. So the first phrase is just, it starts on the minor third of the D minor, and then goes to the fifth, okay? So, and that's a really standard, you know, bit of vocabulary there. Again, so. And this is where it goes to a real cool tension note. So let's just do that. Minor third to the fifth. So F to A, E, E flat, D, C, E flat, or D flat. So that obviously that D flat doesn't uh, naturally fit over the D minor but it's just it's a great tension note and it's it's how you use it you can use pretty much any note on any chord but you need to know uh, you need to approach it in the right way okay you need to set it up in the right way you need to exit that tension in the right way it can't be it's not a free-for-all okay so when you hit that that D flat you play it D flat a, F, okay, so.
again. Now that is a quite a nice phrase there actually. So what I'd probably do is take that little section and just repeat it, repeat it and repeat it until it feels fluid. Okay, now moving on, we've got. Okay, so. So we come down here, this D flat, A, F. And then we land on the third finger, we slide down to the E, which is the ninth of D, and then to the eleventh, and then to the minor third. So F to E to G to F, okay? So three, four, let's loop it. So the next bit, once you get it up to speed, try and get that up to, you know, not, I'm not talking, I'm not talking like that, just. Just a nice flowing speed. Okay, so once you hit that F, we then go up the D minor arpeggio from the minor third, so. There's the D minor arpeggio there, we hit F, A, C. Okay, so. F, A, C, and then D flat again, and then to the D. And that is the, that's the entire um, D minor section that we've played there. Okay. D, two, three, let's slow it down. Okay, so that's the D minor section. Again, repeat it over and over until you get it up to not blazingly fast speed, but just to a to a you know to a comfortable speed where you're not tripping over yourself. Okay, so it could be something like Okay, so the next part. Is actually probably the coolest sounding bit of the lick and one of the easiest. <laughs> okay, so you play the D minor section. And then this is going to that G dominant seven, you hit the third. Okay, third, and then you play E flat, G, B. So you put third, sharp five, root, sharp five. Okay, so this on the G7 notes, B, E flat, G, B. B, E flat, G, B. So, so that's one phrase, let's check it out. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. 
three, four. Now all you do is get that one phrase and move it up in whole tones. Okay. Now it's given us some really cool extensions here. Um, and this is, I get asked a lot, do I think notes when I play? And I really don't think notes when I play. The only thing I really think about is the root note and then I apply a pattern to that root note. So in this case, I'm thinking about the G7, there's the G7, and then I know that this pattern is gonna give me a really cool out sound, you know, a, a really nice tension, because it's got that sharp five in it. And then if I move it up a whole tone, I get the sharp 11, flat seven, and nine, move it up again, sharp five, this is all related to G7, sharp five, root, third, sharp five, and again, seven, nine, sharp 11, seven, flat seven, so. Okay, so let's practice that, those phrases. So the first finger is the leading. Uh, the leading finger. We don't want them to sound like this. They need to sound separate. Okay, so let's put that with the D minor part. Here we go. Again. Really slow. Even slower. ton of bass players using that type of thing. You can, anyway, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And then we go on to the, the next bit where it resolves to C major. Okay, so slide down. So this is just on the C major. It's third to the fifth chromatically. So from the third to the fifth chromatically, and then slide back into the third little uh, slur. Third, root, fifth, fourth, third. Okay. Quite George Benson y kind of vibe. In fact, I think I stole that from him. Cheers, George. Or is it Joe Pass? Maybe Joe Pass. It's a beautiful sounding phrase that. I expect a lot of you might. Larry Carlton maybe. Maybe all those guys have played this lick a thousand times. Okay. So just to be just to go over that last bit i'm getting carried over, carried away there third to the fifth chromatically this is in the c major and then slur into the third root fifth fourth third so e c g f e okay so the entire lick relatively sl slow sounds like this um two three Four. Okay, one 
commence pas. Faster, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Notice that all the notes aren't the same velocity. I'm trying to create hills and valleys. And up to speed, two, three, four. Once you learn these phrases, it's actually quite hard to play the same thing over and over again. You actually want to do what I did there and go off in a different dire direction. Anyway, um, back to what we were talking about. Okay, so right at the beginning of this tutorial, I said, you know, we're gonna be talking about vocabulary. I'm gonna show you how you can take a lick and then reinforce that, use that lick as a reinforcement to your own vocabulary and soak in what you, you know, what, you're, what you wanna get into your own bass playing, okay? So here's the trick. And hopefully, if anybody's been watching this all the way through thinking, I can't play a lick like that, this section is for you, okay? As well as everybody else, this section is for you, okay? So what you do, and we're gonna use this lick just as an example, but you can use any lick, okay? Any little phrase. Um, all you need to do is come up with a little groove and then try and use part of the lick that you've learned within that groove, okay? I'll just say that again. So you come up with a groove, like a one note groove, um, That's not a one note groove, is it? <laughs> one, two, three, four, four note groove, but you can just go. You know, it can be a one note groove, it can be a four note groove, hey, it can be a nine note groove. Um, but. <laughs> 24 note groove. Um, so you just get a groove, and then what we're going to do is steal bits from the lick that we've learned to reinforce within our, uh, to, to get it into our vocabulary, okay? So let's start off with that little, okay? And if you remember, I said that's a real common phrase, stock phrase. So then you play your groove and you try and insert the, a little phrase from the, the, the bigger lick. So we're just taking a little tiny bit from the, it's just the beginning of it. Okay, so we, so let's play the D minor groove. So hear what I'm doing there? I'm not trying to play the whole lick. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to, get that and I'm going to try and insert it within my groove because that is how I'm going to get it in my vocabulary. I'm going to learn how to use it within a groove.
Okay, now you don't have to do it to that speed. It could be a lot slower. And as you can see, I was messing up there, but that's part of it. You know, that is part of it. It's just, you know, you're never going to get it perfect the first time. You're never going to get it perfect the hundredth time. You know, you might get it perfect the thousandth time, hopefully. Um, but that's part of it. So you just you try and get these into that, like, for instance, that little groove there, that little phrase into your groove. So... Like that. Um, let's try and do it an octave, an octave down. Okay. Um. Okay, so I was trying it, and again, I was messing up. I was just experimenting with it. I was doing it over the D minor. Okay. Just over this little, this little section. Now, that was just the first phrase of that lick. What was the next phrase? Okay. So... So that was the next phrase. Now let's try and get that into the into this groove. So you could see that was using there. Okay. I was using little parts of it. And again, you know, you can use that on the G7. So that was just the D minor. That was just two examples of a D minor. Let's use it over a G7. So what we did with the G7 is... That was that part of the lick, right? So let's see if we can use some of that that kind of, th these ideas on a G7 groove. So as you can see, um, I'm just trying to use those ideas within the groove of a G7. You could do it with the C major that, okay.
Okay, I'm just again trying to insert it. It doesn't have to be in the same place. Could be. Um, what are we doing from the third? Um, so that would that would work great down here in the uh, when we were playing that groove. Okay, so again, I'm just trying to insert it within the groove. So remember, when you're learning licks, it's not a bad thing. All you're doing is learning a pre-made sentence, okay? So it's like when you go to the door, you know, you, you generally say the same thing when you open the door. If it's your friend and he's called Steve, for instance, you open the door and you go, hey, Steve, how are you doing? You know, it's a phrase and there's nothing wrong with repeating phrases. The key is to mastering linking the phrases up and being able to move away from them and use tiny little sections from them. And that's where our bass grooves and, you know, all idea, our ideas come from. When somebody says to me, what are you thinking about when you're playing? And I can really relate to this question because it used to drive me nuts. I used to think, what are they thinking while they're playing? What are they thinking? You know, a lot of the time, they're just thinking vocabulary. They're just thinking of phrases, you know, phrases that they've played a million times before, but the, the way they can move throughout them, because they're so comfortable with the phrases, they, you know, it doesn't say, it's not just a lick, it's not just playing the same thing over and over again. They've kind of transcended from that into being able to actually speak on the instrument. And when somebody says, what do people say? There's that phrase that people use, it really annoys me. Just... Just keep playing and find your own sound, man. <laughs> I mean, what does that mean? How helpful is that? But here, I'm here to tell you that this is how you find your own sound. By, you know, transcribing players, getting into your lines, transcribing licks, and then not, not just leaving it there, okay? Don't just, like, learn a lick and leave it there. Get that lick and then try and steal parts of the lick and, and get them into grooves and other lines that you're learning. And that way you're fully learning the phrasing and the vocabulary within the lick. And it's not just like a, a standalone thing, standalone product, right? You want to really inject it into everything you're doing on the bass. So hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson. I know it's been a bit of an epic one, but hopefully you'll be able to, you know, use the concepts that I'm talking about in this lesson within anything that you're working on now, whether you're playing rock or country or jazz or fusion or metal or anything. I was trying to think of a really random, uh, random style of music. Do you know any random styles of music, DMAC? Peruvian nose flute etudes. That's pretty random, right? I wonder if there is, I wonder if there is such a thing as a Peruvian nose flute. If there is, is there anybody that plays a Peruvian nose flute? Let us know below. Uh, link us to a picture of a Peruvian nose flute. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this lesson, uh, remember to click like. Just you know, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. And if you're not a member of the academy yet, go over and check it out. The link is below this video. Um, there's a ton of cool stuff in there and you can try it out um, risk-free for 14 days. So other than that, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed.